Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been learning vocabulary words for HESI out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are right now, as I said, in the process of learning the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of the book. Please turn to it, chapter 3. Now, in the event, in the event that you also need help with the math portion of this exam, we have already solved every single math problem that you will find in this book in these 50 lessons, day number 1 through 50. If there is anything at all that gives you trouble, the videos are there. There are 50 videos in HESIs. And if you need more help, if you need extra help, you can watch the 80 videos, 1 through 80, in math for T's, which is very similar, very comparable to what you will encounter on HESI. Let's get going. Today is our lesson number 9. Today is our lesson number 9, and we're going to pick up from word number 40. Word number 40. And the word is... Now, we understand this being a medical exam to become a nurse. Of course, so once in a while we encounter words which are not very pleasant. But since it's in the book, we have to cover it. Defecate. It's a verb, obviously. Defecate. Of course, I'm going to give you the definition as it appears in the book. More of a medical definition, more of a technical, geeky, uh, nerdy definition as it should be used in the, in, in, in the context of medical discussion. But of course, you know what it means. It just means to... It just means to poop. In the book, it goes on to say that it means to void, to void feces from the bowels. That's more of a technical definition, to void feces from the bowels. Let's learn the word feces. Uh, let's learn the word void, I meant. Let's learn the word void. Void actually has two meanings. It has two meanings. One meaning as it is being used here in this context and the second meaning of the word voice is what you and I will encounter in our daily life, in our day-to-day -day life, when we talk about voiding a document. Let's talk about both of those meanings. First meaning, as you can see, to void feces from our bowels simply means to empty our bowels. Void means to empty. To empty. To take out the contents. To take out the contents of something to to evacuate to evacuate to to leave to vacate all of these meanings simply mean this all of these meanings are the ones that you can use in, in, in terms of as a synonym of voiding to void means to empty, to, to take out the content of something, to, to evacuate it, to, to vacate it, to, to, make it uh, to make it open, to make it open again, to leave. So when the feces leave the bowels, that process is called defecation, which will be the noun. Defecate, defecation. What's the second meaning of the word void? What's the second meaning of the word void? As I said, we all know. We use it in our daily lives uh, once in a while if we come across, which simply means to make to make something. And now when we say something, usually it's a legal document. To make something usually a legal document. ineffective or useless. If you make a legal document, if you declare that this document has no longer any 
any force, this, law, this document has no longer any, any implication, this document carries no longer any, uh, any relevance, then the way it's actually done is in the, on, 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 you will pick up the document and you will write down the word usually, but usually it is done in the context of a personal check. If you write a check to someone and that if you, if you, if you don't want that check to be cashed anymore, you would simply you would pick up your check, you would pick up your check and you put down the word void on it. Hence rendering, hence rendering it ineffective, hence rendering it uh, worthless. It becomes worthless to make something, usually a legal document, ineffective or useless. Having no legal force, having, having no legal force or validity having no legal force or validity and the, and the process that one does voiding a check sometimes we write down word and sometimes they would say null and void null and void for example for example I might say that uh, if I if I wanted to buy a property excuse me for a second I think I'm going to sneeze if I if I'm in the process of buying a property and if I if I give uh, a deposit to the seller, let's say I give a $10,000 deposit to the seller right, and I promise the seller that I'll close the deal within 30 days, the well, seller might put in stipulation, seller might put in a condition on the document, in the contract, in the purchase contract, that if I don't follow through, if I do not close within 30 days, if I don't follow through within 30 days, then the seller reserves the right to void the entire contract, to void it, to make it rendering it null and void after 30 days. So on 31st days, if the seller so chooses, he or she simply may re simply return the $10,000 I gave to the person, and now he's no longer under any obligation at all of the terms of the contract. He's free to, to, to do whatever he wants as well, once he's to with his property. He's no longer obligated to sell the property to me because I did not close within 30 days. I did not close the deal. And there was a clause in there which says that if I don't close within 30 days, the seller may decide to make the contract null and void. Seller may decide to void the contract. You can use it as a verb to void the contract or to make it null and void or to make it void. So instead, you can use it both as a noun and as an adjective. This contract has been voided. This is a void contract. So that was it. Let's move on. Do not know why we get into so much detail. We are not here for legal jargons. We are not here for all of that things. We are here to pass Hesse. What the hell is the matter with me? 42. In 42 and in 43, what we want to learn is what we want to learn is the difference between these two words. What we want to learn is the difference between these two words. One, one spelled with a C and the other one is spelled with an S. The one that is spelled with a C is a noun and is pronounced device. Device with an S sound. Device with an S sound. And the one that is spelled with an S is a verb and is pronounced Device, device, device with a Z sound, Z sound at the end, device and device. Device, S, device, it has a Z sound. To devise something with a Z sound, to devise something means to plot something, to come up with something, to contrive something, to plot something, to hatch a plan. If you, if you plan something, if you cook up a story, if you cook up a plan, that's called devising it. To plan something, to plot something, to plot something, to, to plan something, to make up something, to 
make up something artificially to make up something artificially and of course to make up something artificially the word that we use is the word that is used is to contrive to contrive a word a word that we have already learned word that we have already learned in the other series of vocabulary not the Hesse series but the ordinary vocabulary series in day number 10 just type in doesn't matter which exam you're preparing for whether you're preparing for T's or Hesse's or GRE or GMAT or SAT or SAT just type in any of the tests for example you might type in GRE vocabulary word or SAT vocabulary word or Hesse vocabulary word day 10 day 10 and you will see a video where we learn the word contrive. Contrive means to make up something artificially. Something that requires some sort of a, some level of ingenuity. You have to be ingenious to come up to cook something up and such a thing is uh, such a process is called devising something. He devised a nice plan as to how he was go about, go about robbing that bank. Do you understand? He devised a nice plan, a clever plan to make up something artificially, to hatch a scheme, to hatch a plot, device. And this is device, which is a noun, which is a noun, which simply means a tool. A tool, an equipment, an equipment, a piece of machinery. a piece of machinery to perform a certain task, to perform a certain task, to, to do something and if you use certain tool, that tool is called a device a device device and device notice that they are not notice that they are not homonyms they are not homonyms, they are not pronounced in the same way, obviously we made a note here device device is pronounced with a Z and device, a noun, is pronounced with an S device they are not homonyms what I want to do next right now is to talk a little bit about the concept, the notion of homonyms since I brought it up we can't just hang, leave it hanging let's talk, let's, let's talk a little bit as to what are homonyms if somebody were to come up to you if someone were to come up to you and ask you to define homonyms, will you be able to articulate properly, cogently, the definition of homonyms? Cogently is the word that we just used. Would you be able to articulate cogently the definition of the word homonym? What does cogent mean? I'm curious here. As to which day we learned it, just give me one second and I'll tell you. I know we have learned the word cogent. Because every time when we're doing a math problem, I make a big fuss about being able to articulate a notion, a concept, cogently. Day number seven. Again, day number seven of not the Hesse series, but that series. Let's, let's talk about homonyms. Let's talk about homonyms. Before we actually talk about the notion, the concept of homonyms, let's first dissect the word. Let's first dissect the word homonym to see what the word literally means. Let's first understand the literal meaning of the word homonym. Homonym is of course made up of two parts. The prefix, the prefix homo, and the suffix nim. Homo, as you know, means same. And nim is the Latin word for name. Homonym, which is where the words like synonym and antonym come from. Antonym is so called because in antonym, it's the same idea. In antonym, 
the prefix. If I misspell it, don't make a fuss about it, okay? I'm not sure if I spell it correctly. Antonym. I'm not sure what it's spelling. Antonym, the prefix anti, means opposite. And name means name, which is why it's called antonyms. Antonyms are two words that have opposite meanings. Opposite meaning. And literal meaning of the word antonym is opposite names. Synonyms, same name. Homonym, same name. But this notion of synonym, uh, this notion of homonym, and the notion of notion of synonyms is different. Synonyms are, of course, you know what synonyms are. Synonyms are two words that mean the same. Do you understand? Wealthy and rich, uh, poor and pauper, destitution and, and poverty. These are synonyms. Uh, and trap it and brave. These are synonyms. Do you understand? We're not talking about synonyms. Here we're talking about homonyms. What are homonyms? Let's talk about them. Homonym literally means same names. So let's talk about what homonyms are. Homonyms are two words. Homonyms are two words. Homonyms. Homonyms are two words. And sometimes more than two. But more than two is very rare. You cannot you will not very often find three or four words that would meet the condition that we're going to discuss. Usually it's the pair. Two words that that have that have different meanings and different different spellings they have different meanings and different spellings they're not spelled the same way they have different meanings and different spelling but but are pronounced in the same way. But are pronounced in the same way. What I'm going to do in the next video, not right now, what I'm going to do in the next video is uh, what we're going to do in the next video is to go through list of homonyms. And before you watch the next video, for all, which the title of the video is simply going to be what are homonyms. Before you watch that video, what are homonyms? It's not going to be labeled. It's not going to be labeled as uh, day number ten. It's just going to say homonyms. What are homonyms? Before you watch that video, I want you to sit down and see if we can come up with a list of at least ten homonyms. At least ten homonyms. Again, one more time. These have to be two words. They have to have different. Sp they have to have different meanings. They cannot mean the same thing, and they have to have a different spellings. They must have different spellings, different meanings, but for some strange and inexplicable reason, we have chosen to pronounce these words in the same manner. The pronunciation is the same, same exact pronunciation. I want you to come up with 10 pairs. When you watch the video, you will see that we will go through more than 10 pairs, maybe 15, maybe 20 pairs. Okay? Bye now.